What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Zamboni. Uh, yesterday, I did a weekly forecast, and there were two main things that, two main pieces of feedback that I got from that. The first was, oh, look at the baby, and that's totally where my heart was. And then the other piece of feedback I got was, dude, what the fuck are you even saying right now? And um, I think that I, like, my heart was softened by the baby, and I didn't want to like freak her out and so then i ended up softening my whole demeanor which then softened my points as well so i i came off unclear now one of the things that i mentioned during that is i think that that is a good metaphor for where we're going so there the main thing that i wanted to talk about is i wanted to talk about mars and mercury moving from yang signs moving from fire and air signs move, which want to move up and out that's what yang wants to do it wants to go up it wants to be loud it wants to be bright and vibrant and like in your face with stuff it, mars and mercury moving from yang signs into yin signs mercury is going to move into cancer mars is going to move into taurus yin is the opposite to yang yin is going to be the one that has to do with uh, so this is water and earth, not fire and air, which go up by their nature, but water and earth, which go down by their nature. They are cool. They are dark. Um, you know, where the yang versus yin is going to be like, yang is the sunny side of the hill versus yin is the shady side of the hill, right? How do these things feel different, right? And so as we see Mercury and Mars moving into these yin signs, then one of the reasons why that's a, a nice metaphor here is because uh, the feeling of it is so important. Rather than being explicitly intelligible, that uh, there's something like really uh, prosaic about the way that Mercury, especially in uh, Gemini or in um, in a yang sign, it'll, it'll want to sort of like delineate things and it'll, it'll give you like a bulleted list and this kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's pretty actionable and intelligible versus Mercury in a water sign, which is thought of as mute, right? And so when we think about mute, about not having the voice properly, then there's something or, or not being able to speak, right? Um, sometimes, uh, like if, if you were to cut someone's tongue out, then they, were to, then they would be mute, right? But that person would still be able to vocalize. That third person would still have access to things like melody and song and stuff like this, right? And so there, there's this idea of like not being able to say the thing exactly. And so then having to approach around symbolic or metaphoric kind of means, right? So the, we get into melody, we get into poetry and this sort of stuff. Um, if you, you know, so I, my keyword for Mercury in Cancer was listen to your body, right? And so one of the things that I wanted to think about there was not necessarily trying to be out and saying your point and like giving your hot take about everything and all this, but rather sort of listening, not only listening to other people and, and you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to like listen to everyone else's hot take necessarily, right? But sort of like generating a kind of quiet. And then in that listening space, you can listen to body, you can listen to place there. If you are in that sort of quiet space, then you can get into this place where um, you can do things like spirit contact or you can, um, you know, you can think with the ancestors or something like this. So whenever that happens, whenever you make spirit contact and it's not going to be it's it's unlikely that you're going to have like a burning bush kind of scenario where you're like, oh, snap. And then having a conversation with God or whatever you think that is like more likely it's going to come through your own head and it's going to come through your voice and it's going to sound like it's in your voice. And so there's so there's this deep listening that has to take place because it's going to be going on in this space, which is not associated with the uh, sort of external vibrations that we sort of that, that we tend to think about as sound. Right. So if we're doing Mercury and Cancer, listen to your body then. And that that can be, you know, listen to your body, regular stuff like uh like, oh, I'm sleepy, maybe I should go to bed, or I'm hungry, maybe I should get something to eat, or something like this, right? Um, and then, and you can always do that with, like, uh, with medicine and drugs and stuff like that as well. Like, um, one, my, uh, one of my teachers, one of my herb teachers uh, used to tell me, my, my auntie, shout out to Tracy, what's up, Tracy? 
um, she used to always say that like if the, the she would serve up herbs to people and she would be like if it tastes good then that one's good for you this is the one that you need because these herbal formulations they don't always taste good to people a lot of times people will be like yeah right but <clears throat> If you get it in there and it like and you and you're like, ooh, this one's really good, then that is an indication that that one is the one for you, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to listen to our body in order to gain information that might not be <clears throat> explicitly knowable. This is why I was talking about like UPG, unverified personal gnosis, and this sort of stuff. <clears throat> you're going to be doing all this like listening during this time period, or I encourage doing a fair bit of listening partially because the explicit and prosaic communication doesn't work as well during this time. And so listening is like to be a, likely to be a more effective communication measure. So that's just something to think with there. The other thing that we're gonna be looking at here is we've got Mars moving from Aries into Taurus. So as Mars moves from a Mars sign a young Mars sign, so this is like really want to go out here and do all the war making or do all the action and get stuff pumping and like, uh, you know, exercising and all this sort of stuff. Mars moving into Taurus. Taurus prefers generally to be fixed and stable and foundational. We can think about fixed earth. I, I often think about mud and this kind of thing, right? Mud is very rich but it is also very stagnant. And this is part of the, the thing that we get, see going on here with Taurus in general. Now Uranus has been here disrupting that for some time. And that Uranus <clears throat> is also square to Saturn in Aquarius. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's early in the morning here. Um, the, so Uranus square to Saturn, We've been talking about this for a long time. Saturn wants to organize things. Saturn wants to make uh, efficiency possible or do management or something like this. Uranus is like, fuck that. I hate what you're doing, Saturn. I hate bosses. I, I want to be free and I want to like break out of all this and this kind of thing. Mars is going to potentiate that. But this week, we're not going to see Mars conjunct Uranus. This week, we're not going to see Mars square Saturn. What we're going to see now is going to be more sort of background influences. We're going to see the landscape shifting toward yin and away from yang. So especially if we think with both of these things together, right? Both Cancer and Taurus are deeply embodied signs. They are signs that care significantly about flesh. How does it feel in my body? Mercury and Cancer, listen to my body, right? Let's see what's going on here. Let's pay attention, let's take stock. Mars and Taurus is here with Uranus that wants to be a little disruptive or something like this. So there might be some kind of situation where it's like, I haven't been resting enough for a period of years, or I haven't been eating enough for a period of, it doesn't take that long with, with food. Like I haven't been eating enough for a period of days and I'm fucking mad about it. And that's, that's gonna be the kind of dynamic that we've got going on here. How does my body feel? And then as we see Mars in Taurus, Mars in Taurus is gonna have the square to Saturn. It's a whole sign square, which is gonna be building for a while. So there's gonna be this sense of resistance to authority, resistance to management, resistance to um, being ordered. Ro ordination is the word I was looking for there. Like uh, Mars in Taurus is not gonna like that shit. And so we're going to start to see this move toward that. Again, this week is not the week for that necessarily. We're not going to see things exploding necessarily this week. Um, but, you know, Uranus, you, you can always get a surprise with Uranus. But we're not necessarily going to see the peak of these transits right now. What we're going to start to see is a shift toward this motion, toward this internal sense of, I know something or I feel something and then that feeling which may in fact be uncomfortable that feeling of discomfort can then go on to uh, motivate actions that are not necessarily explicable in the like if I you know it's like when you're it's like when you're mad about something and you don't know why you're mad right but a way to think about why you're mad would be to sit in your body and listen and these kinds of things. Again, I've run out of time here. I found out that the limit is 10, not 15 minutes. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to send me a tip via Venmo Cash App PayPal, I would super appreciate it. This is my second round time. Thank you for rocking with me. I super appreciate you. If you want to join the Patreon, please do that. Appreciate all y'all. See y'all next time.